Hey everyone, I'm back again, and I'm not here with an update video this time, I'm here with a different, I'm actually here with a tutorial on 2D collisions, basic 2D collisions. I've seen a ton of people having issues with it, um, a bunch of responses uh, on my YouTube videos and also on forums, so I decided to make a video on it. Um, so what I set up here is I set up already um, using my game engine, I didn't use uh, libgdx or anything, um, I set up a basic game. Now, right now, I'll show you how it works. Right now, you are the green person. Um, the red people are collisions in this case. Now, right now, obviously, they're not colliding. I'm going to show you how to, how to implement that. So, for each different class, here's the main screen. What this does, it really just creates a uh, player and the collision manager, and then it sets the background to white. It draws all the collisions, draws a player, um, player, and then here it checks uh, if keys are present, moves it accordingly. In the player, we just have the x and y coordinates. We have some getter methods. We have a get bounds method which returns a rectangle to draw and then if you move to go to the move function all it does is add in the uh, amount to the x and y and then here's where we're going to fill in for the collisions and then here's where it just draws the player um, at the x and y position and then uh, in the collision manager all we have is we have an array list of uh, rectangles that are called collisions and they added in a bunch of them those are the red things that you saw that showed up and then here I rendered each of them so that's where those all come from now getting into the collisions. Now I've seen a lot of people having issues with them and I'm going to kind of show you how to get around all the issues and the jumpiness of the collisions and stuff like that. So this will work for just about any 2D game, uh, 2D game whether it's Java, C++, really any language that uh, you need to use the collisions for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in uh, four different uh, variables. So I'm going to add in LX, LY, DX, and DY. Now what this stands for is LX is the last X position, LY is the last Y position, dx is the, is the desired x position and dy is the desired y position. So really, every single time you move, it's going to set the last position to whatever the position was before you moved, and the desired x is going to be the x before we actually set it, and the y before we set it. Now you'll kind of understand more as you go through it, it might be confusing, you don't have to go back through that and see it. Um, but first thing we want to do is we want to change the, um, this move function here to desired x. So in your game, wherever you have it adding directly to the x function, just get rid of that and make it go to the desired x function, desired y function. And desired, I mean, this is where the player wants to move to. And then after that, we want to call check collisions. Because after they move, we want to see if there's a collision. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new rectangle out of the desired uh, position. So we're going to do rectangle desired equals new rectangle dx dy, and then we'll do um, 64 by 64 is what the width and the height are. Um, so this creates a rectangle at the position of where the player wants to be next with the width and the height. And now we are also going to um, do this. So up here when it's set uh, lx equal to x, uh, ly equal to y, and that should be good there. Now what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to go through each collision in the collision manager and see if it if it collides with any of them. So we're going to create a for loop. We're going to do for rectangle r in uh, collision manager dot collisions. So for each uh, rectangle that is inside of this array list, in this case there's three of them, it's going to loop through each one and see if it collides. So we're going to do if r dot intersects desired. So if they run into each other, if the new position the player wants to be at, the desired position, intersects with the uh, collision, then what we're going to do is we're simply going to set um, dx equal to lx, dy equal to ly, and that's that. That's all it is. Um, what that's doing is, <coughs> if it does collide, it moves it back to the last posi position the player was at. So before we move, it's going to be set at, say we set x200 and y200. It's setting the last position of and the current position equal to 100 here for the x and the y's. Now when we come down here, it uh, say we move it dx to the right 4 and say it intersects with the rectangle in that case. What it does is it sets dx back to 100 or whatever the position was last. And then all we have to do after that is we just have to do x equals dx, y equals dy, ly, or lx equals x, and then ly equals y. Um, so that's all we have to do. And now if we run it, it should actually work. As simple as that. Um, let me double check here. So as I run into it, I cannot go through it. I can move backwards, forwards, uh, any way that I want to go. Uh, there's no restrictions and people, honestly, people overthink collisions like no other. Um, so I mean, I don't know why, and this is a graphical error by the way. Um, people overthink it like they have to check the top and then the left and the right. This is all you have to do. Um, the spaces you see in between are graphical errors. There's going to be no jumpiness to any of the collisions and there's no tricks and secrets to it. That's simply all the code you have to go through. So you add in four extra variables and then you make this 
super super easy check collision. So let me go over it again. <clears throat> first, the player, say we're first at 100 by 100. So we're 100 here, and we're 100 here. And say that there, uh, we move to the right. So uh, dx equals 104, and dy equals 100, because we move to the right um, by 4. Now say that it collides. It collides with a rectangle. What it does is it sets dx equal to lx and lx equals 100. So then therefore dx is going to equal 100, the last position. And dy is going to equal ly, which ly equals 100 as well. Um, and then as we move, if it doesn't interfere, then it's going to let dx, if it doesn't interfere, it's not going to change dx at all, and it's going to let it be. So say it didn't inter intersect with anything. What it does is it jumps all of this, it goes right down here, and it sets x equal to 104 and y equal to 100. And that's how it works. It's really this basic collisions. People don't have to overthink it at all. But that's really all that people do is they overthink it, and they look online, and they find all these complicated things. This is all it is. So that's the easy way to do it. I hope that you guys like this. If you do find it helpful, please let me know below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll see you later.